We're going to take a look at a more premium Radeon 9060 XT model today. This one is Sapphire's Nitro Plus, and we'll see how well this does against the 5060 Ti in a fair comparison. Welcome to Machines and More. So I was at AMD's press event when they announced the 9060 XT, and that's basically half of a 9070 XT dimer. It comes in 8 and 16 gig uh, VRAM options. And if you saw my video on the announcement, there's a graph comparing the 5060 Ti to the 9060 XT, and you always have to take these things with a bucket of salt because, uh, you know, they are marketing material. But uh, quietly, they were comparing the 8 gig 5060 Ti to the 16 gig 9060 XT, and the graph is suggesting that the 9060 XT was superior. And while I can understand their rationale here, since the suggested pricing of the 16 gig 9060 XT is still below that of the 8 gig 5060 Ti, at the same time, the 8 gig 5060 Ti isn't a card that users should consider buying so that comparison to me is less appropriate and it really is just clever marketing so we're going to make more of a normalized comparison today the card here that i'm testing is sapphire's nitro plus 9060 xt 16 gig that's the only uh, vram option that the nitro plus comes with a big thanks to sapphire for sending it by for a review and i did want to be clear that this video is not sponsored by them Nitro Plus is their highest end model for the 9060 XT, and this is going to be in the upper echelon of 9060 XT models. And that's probably why there's a different review embargo for this one versus the more basic ones. Uh, today, you should be able to go and get a 9060 XT on a virtual or physical shelf. So hopefully this still provides value for users as you're making some decisions for completing your build. Real quick, some key spec differences on this particular model. The Nitro Plus is at the highest 182 watt TBP target for 9060 XTs. AMD's base spec for 16 gigs is 160 watts. This card still uses a single eight pin power port, so all good on that front, nice and clean. With the increased power spec, the boost clock on this one is up to 3320 megahertz, and it's got a 2780 megahertz game clock. And that's only a modest bump up over the more basic pure and pulse models from Sapphire that are 170 watts TBP, and those are specced at a 3290 megahertz boost and the same game clock. In uh, Cyberpunk at 1440p, the Nitro Plus boosted up to 3125 megahertz. I don't have a base 160 watt card on hand right now, but manually limiting the power target to 160 watts for this card yielded 2960 megahertz. Other features here, it's a bigger three fan cooler, 2.7 slots thick, large flow through heatsink section with that third fan, and you got four heat pipes with this heatsink, and it's a very long light bar that they call the glow light bar. It's a pretty bold design though, uh, silverish gray, so it can fit within many different color schemes. There's a grill over here on the side of the card. And uh, for the power level that 9060 XT is at, this is way more than enough cooler than is strictly necessary, even at the higher TBP level. The advantages here, your fan speeds can run lower. You have lower noise because of that. You have lower temps as a result of the bigger cooler. And you will get some slightly better clocks because it is uh, pushed a little bit more out of the box. Of course, as you'll see though, the performance at 182 watts won't be leaps and bounds over the standard 160 watts. And incidentally, the 5060 Ti 16 gig has a TBP of 180 watts. So when we're comparing the higher power 9060 XT, that's also more or less a more fair or normalized comparison on power to the 5060 Ti. For buyers that are considering buying a standalone card, as in you're not getting it as part of a pre-built system, whether it's the NVIDIA 5060 Ti or AMD's 9060 XT, my opinion is that users should pay the extra for the 16 gig models. Uh, you don't necessarily need all that VRAM, but eight gigs will be constraining with some titles today. So Sapphire's MSRP for this card is $399. It's a $50 premium over AMD's MSRP. Now the general expectation is that you're not going to find too many cards at MSRP. And what we saw with the 9070 launches was that Users could get that in the XT at places like Micro Center uh, at MSRP uh, on launch day. And that price slowly ratcheted up over the weeks that follow. So AMD cards are not necessarily immune to the uh, higher GPU pricing that we're seeing now. 
Compare that to the 5060 Ti 16 gig, which has definitely been going for more than the 429 MSRP as well. Uh, the one I am comparing to is the 5060 Ti Prime OC, so that is beyond the base model a little bit. But for the sake of comparison, we'll just proceed with the assumption that even a premium 9060 XT like this uh, should come in lower in price than a more garden variety 5060 Ti. And for some additional reference, I will also have the 9070 cards plus the 5070 here uh, on the graphs. Nothing beyond that, just keep the graphs cleaner and easier to read. So let's just walk through the synthetic benchmarks first. The 9060 XT is basically a 9070 XT die that's cut in half. Uh, the clock speeds are higher though, so performance is more than half. Uh, against the 5060 Ti, it's kind of a mixed bag though. Uh, this one, it's it's close in Port Royal, ahead in Time Spy Extreme, but it's behind in Superposition. So it doesn't really tell us too much other than that the two are close. Moving on to actual 1440p gaming, I am pairing with a 9800X 3D. Uh, Cyberpunk 9060 XT ends up only a tad behind the 5060 Ti with the RT off. Once you enable RT, the gap does grow wider, but uh, you know, not that either of those are remotely playable. FSR 3 versus DLSS is not apples to apples, but I did want to just give you an idea. The NVIDIA card here also has the frame gen turned on. For Red Dead 2, it's just straight raster comparison here. The 9060 XT leads here. Interestingly, even at 160 watts, it is ahead. Black Myth Wukong RT off the 5060 Ti does lead. Now, regardless of whether the frame rate is playable or not, as with Cyberpunk here, with RT on, the gap is a lot larger. And with frame gen on, the 9060 XT still lags by a significant amount. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 5060 Ti leads here. Again, not a huge difference between the 182 watts and the 160 watt power levels for the 9060 XT. For Assassin's Creed Mirage, it's dead even on the averages, although the 60 Ti leads in lows. In Valhalla, the 60 Ti scooches ahead here. Uh, Monster Hunter Wilds, the 9060 XT performs pretty well here and beats out the 5060 Ti. So I wasn't able to run my full suite of games I usually test with as I did have some pre-release issues with the uh, two games not loading or having a black screen. But for those seven titles, the Geo Mean indicates that the 5060 Ti 16 gig version is 4.6% more performant on the raster benchmarks versus the 9060 XT 16 gig. And for the extra 22 watts of TBP that you spend, uh, the boost is a small 1.6% for the 9060 XT. You can still manually tune this 9060 XT even though it's pre-OC out of the box and playing around with a little bit with the sliders at plus 250 megahertz and with a minus 100 millivolt voltage offset. Now without adjusting the power limit settings, the clocks came in at about 280 megahertz higher and that resulted in a measly one FPS difference in Cyberpunk. So the, probably the more expedient thing that you may consider doing is just to drop the power. And as mentioned, dropping the power limit down to that 160 watt level doesn't severely impact performance, but that lower power will result in lower fan speeds required. Now for this test here, I was just letting the card run on the auto setting. Uh, so you'll see the temps went down as the fan uh, bumped up at the 180 watt level versus the lower fan level the card was running at uh, 460 watts. Real quick just to listen to the fan noise here for the Nitro Plus and keeping in mind that in a system with decent airflow you really should not see more than 40% fans in gaming use and at that level these fans were not very audible above the ambient noise of the case. All right, so Sapphire's Nitro Plus is a very good looking cooler. It's a really premium looking implementation here. Now, the only feedback I have on the design is it's a big, thick uh, shroud, but on the flow through side, the heat sink still has a bit of room below that back plate. So if they wanted to, they could make the heat fins a bit thicker there and make full use of the form factor. But you know, you already get very good temps with the coolers. So that's not strictly uh, necessary, but nice to have. To sum this one up, it's a premium level a lower mid-range card, but on raw performance alone, I don't expect the extra board power to significantly outperform 
a more basic card. And what you can expect with a card like this is quieter operation and the looks and some folks will really like how this looks in their build versus 50 60 ti as mentioned with my testing deficit it's about five percent so depending on how much you can get a 50 60 ti 16 gig for if it's not too much more than a card like this and i can see a scenario where a user might choose the 60 ti over the uh, 9060 xt and the nvidia cards do offer those features that they like to tout uh, some features like you know users find value in dlss and mfg and i can't argue with that but if the 5060 ti ends up being 60 or 70 dollars more than the 9060 xt then i think that's the point where you kind of if you're just after raster performance it would make sense just to stick with the 9060 xt and this is assuming that that's all the performance that you need if you need more, the vanilla 9070 is the next Radeon card up, and that is at least 50% better than the 9060 XT. So there's a very big gap there. And yeah, I'm kind of curious to see where the pricing on the Nitro Plus ends up being later today, since a non XT 9070 is going for a premium at this point. So if you can actually get this for that $400 MSRP at launch, then it might be okay in that context. So yeah, good luck if you're going for one of these. If you would like to support the channel, please go ahead and use the links that I'll leave down below and uh, make sure that you give a like and are, are subscribed if you enjoyed it. And a big thanks for watching today.